In HBO's critically acclaimed sci-fi series Westworld, robots fight to free themselves from human control as humans experiment with using these robots to become immortal. For three years we lived here in the park, refining the host. Myself, a team of engineers, and my partner. His name was Arnold. He wanted to create consciousness. As the show suggests, the robots have attained a measure of consciousness, the central idea of which has moved from whether consciousness can be artificially manufactured to whether we can preserve human consciousness by printing it onto AI. In real life, we've only just begun to understand where human consciousness comes from. I'm David Eagleman, I'm a neuroscientist. I teach at Stanford and I run a company called Neosensory. I'm a scientific advisor for Westworld. People often ask how close we are to having a Westworld-like thing in our reality. I think it's really, really distant for a couple of reasons. One is that AI can do very impressive things right now, like tell you if it's a picture of a dog versus a cat better than a human can, or play chess or go better than a human can. But these are extremely rarefied examples, and what AI is not any good at is the sort of broad intelligence that, for example, a three-year-old has. We're not really close to having AI that seems like a human, that's number one. Number two is that the hardware of building a robot that's like a human is not really so practical because building robots is really, really hard and you're constantly tending to the toilet of the robot, as the expression goes, meaning yeah, you're con this wire breaks or that joint breaks. Eagleman thinks building a robot that can hold anything close to human consciousness is not as easy as it seems in the show. That's because neuroscientists are still trying to decipher the human brain. Think of consciousness as the thing that flickers to life when you wake up in the morning. This awareness of what it is to be you one of the big open questions in neuroscience, and this has been an open question since probably the 1930s or so, is the question of could you build something like a computer or any kind of mechanical device that becomes conscious, that becomes sentient? We are made up, as far as we can tell, we're just made up of pieces and parts. They're very sophisticated biological pieces and parts, but fundamentally each is just following its rules of physics and chemistry, the lowest potential energy, and so everything is driving everything else and it's just a machine. So in that way, we think it might be possible to build a machine that is conscious because we are the existence proof. The flip side of that is that we just don't have any sense of how that would go. In other words, we don't have any theories that explain what consciousness is. We just haven't figured out all the secrets to it yet. There is no threshold that makes us greater than some of our parts. No inflection point at which we become fully alive. We can't define consciousness because consciousness does not exist. What is it about the human brain that makes it so hard to map onto AI? You know, the thing to keep in mind is there are almost a hundred billion neurons. Those are the specialized cell type in the brain. Each one of those has about 10,000 connections to its neighbors. So there's, you know, almost a thousand trillion connections in the brain. One moment I'm with a little girl. Next time back in Sweetwater. I can't tell which is real. The concern is that the host will remember some of their experiences and act on them. The brain's ability to remember is critical for its capacity to simulate the future. So uh, it turns out that a big part of what intelligent brains do is they're constantly simulating possible futures, as in, if I do this, then this will happen. We spend most of our time unhooked from the present moment and simulating futures or reminiscing about the past. In this way, you know, memory, being able to reconfigure the circuitry of the brain and write things down about what happened is critical. This is a test, one we've done countless times. What are you testing for? Fidelity. So what we have happening in AI are these very useful networks like uh, what are called deep learning networks or convolutional networks that can do clever sorts of things, but it's nothing like how the brain is actually operating. It may be that once we figure out the principles of brain operation, we can build a brain in a more compact form, and that's exactly what happens in Westworld. They've got the pearl, which is essentially everything that you need in the brain in a very compact form because we're building it with, you know, new kinds of materials, it's certainly possible that we can make a smaller version of it. A robot revolution is probably not coming anytime soon. 
And that's because we still need to figure out what it means to be human. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.